right, so I clicked on the video. In today's video, we're gonna be testing out these three saws. We've got the Katana Boy 500, we've got the Katana Boy 650, and this one, we've got the Katana Boy 1000. This is a staggering one meter long blade. These are folding saws, and they're incredible when it comes to sawing wood. All right, with that being said, let's go find some wood. So as we're approaching the cold winter months, what I need to do is gather a bit of firewood. So I've just got this nice bit of dried seasoned cedar. I need to saw it down. And to begin with, for this video, I'm gonna start by using the smaller saw. This is the Katana Boy 500. And you should see this thing. It is an absolute beast. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna start with this saw, with this blade, and I'm gonna take down a bit of this firewood. What I'm then going to do is go through the other two saws that I have and work my way up by finding a larger, a bigger diameter firewood to saw through. The blade length on this is 500 millimeters and it's got five teeth per 30 millimeters. And trust me, they really are sharp. It's a great saw, it's great for seasoned wood and fresh wood. As you probably realize, it's a pull saw, which means it cuts on the pull. So it gives you a nice clean cut. Perfect. So that's the Katana Boy 500, and yes, I have used this for many, many projects. It's been a great, an absolute great saw. It's got a safety lock on it, by the way, which is a great little feature, because the last thing you want is this closing down onto your fingers. Ouch. The next saw I would like to introduce you to is this one. This is the Katana Boy 650. So 650 millimeters long. Again, it locks into place. It's a very long blade again. And the great safety feature with these is that there, there's no way of this folding down onto my fingers. So it's a great safety feature. There you can see it's a Kat Katana Boy 650. But I think it's time we found something a little bit bigger, a little bit more of a diameter to it, rather than that small bit of wood that I just sawed through. So let's go through the woodland and find a bigger tree. And then after that, we're gonna be trying out this saw, which is the Katana Boy 1000. But until then, we'll use the 650. So what we have here is the remains of a fallen ash. It's fallen during a big recent storm, and you can see there it's taken out one of these woodland shelters. So I think it's only right if we help out the woodland shelter by removing some of the weight from it, so the shelter can be rebuilt. And to do that, we're gonna be using this, the Katana Boy 650. Safety lock, safety first. This has got four teeth per 30 millimeters. It's a professional saw, folding saw. Once again, suitable for fresh or seasoned wood. 
And to make things that little bit more difficult, I'm gonna saw through this bit right here. You can see it's had already, it's out already had a chainsaw cut right there, but I'm not gonna saw through that. I'm not gonna use that, because that'll be cheating. I'm gonna go straight through this. And in fact, I'm gonna try and go through right here where it should be a little bit tougher than it would be say there or further down. It's because this is where all the grain meets. This is where it's almost a bit of a knot. So it's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge. You can see there, I'm about 10 seconds into it and I've already gone through about two or three inches. So once again, this is a pull saw. It means that it cuts on the pull. It doesn't cut on the push, it just cuts on the pull. Now let's change the camera angle. And there it is, nice bit of ash. Wow, lovely bit of grain to it. Right, let's test out the other one. So it's actually quite a humid day. I think before I test out the next saw, I might take my jacket off. That's much better. Hey, merch by the way, thank you. In case that anyone's wondering, this isn't a sponsored video. I'm just so obsessed with these folding saws. I've got quite a range now. For anyone that's seen any of my live streams, you've probably seen how many folding saws I have. But this one, it's the first time I've actually used this, the Katana Boy 650. And you know what? I'm very impressed. And the teeth, whoo, still razor sharp. So let's put this folding saw away and get out the Katana Boy 1000. And trust me, it's an absolute beast. Before we get into the big one, let's talk about other saws that you can buy. For example, this is a great size saw when it comes to hiking, backpacking, or even taking out camping for a weekend. This will get you out of a lot of scenarios. For example, if there's a small fallen tree, if you need to collect some firewood, gather kindling, this is a great one for taking with you. Specs wise, well it's called the Silky Big Boy and it's got 10 teeth per 30 millimeters. Again, it's a pull saw, it works by pulling, it cuts on the pull. Um, it doesn't have the safety lock, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, however, it does have this press button lock, which I, I guess you could accidentally knock it when you're sawing, but the chances are very small. One other feature this has is that when you press it, not only does it fold, but it also goes into this motion, into that angle there, which it depends on what angle you're trying to saw at. If you're trying to reach up or down, you can angle it to how you want it. But in, in general, what I normally do is I normally have it on this angle because that makes it perfect for sawing. However, there are smaller blades out there, saws. This, this is the Pocket Boy. This is perfect. You can, you can carry this on your belt. It can go in the pocket of your jacket. This is a great little saw. I wouldn't go cutting anything for anything for anything too large because you can see you won't really cut through that much with this. It's great for cutting through seasoned wood and green wood. I normally use this when I'm going out in the woods and I need to collect things for cooking for the wood that I need. For, for example, fresh hazel. When it comes to making skewers and so on, I use this. This is a great little pruning saw. I even used it in my back garden to prune the apple trees last week. So yeah, a great little folding saw, super lightweight. I don't really know how light it is, but trust me, it's very light. Specs wise, well, let's have a look. This is the Pocket Boy, and it's again, it's the 170. So it's a Pocket Boy 170, and it's got 10 teeth per 30 millimeters. You can see there, it's the Pocket Boy Professional 10. So 10 teeth per 30 millimeters. 
another great little companion to have in your pocket when you're out hiking, camping or even fishing to get those branches out of the way when you're sitting by the lake or when you're fly fishing, that branch is in the way. One of these will sort you out. Lovely, great little blade, great saw. So as I said, it's now time to try out the Katana Boy 1000. This I've used in the past. In fact, I used this with Mike from TA Outdoors and we took out, we removed a lot of fallen trees when it came to building our roundhouse camp. But we've cut through some seasoned cedar. We've cut through some fresh ash. Let's try and find something a little bit tougher, a little bit more of a challenge. And I've got a feeling if we look hard enough, we'll be able to find some oak. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. A nice bit of oak to make this challenge, well, worth watching. Let's go. When it comes to using the saws for building shelters, this is one of them. This, as many of you know, this is the Viking house. This took quite a long time to build. And the main folding saw that I used for this was the Katana Boy 500. Whereas the new build, the roundhouse shelter, that's what I used the Katana Boy 1000 to build. Speaking of which, let's go find a bit of oak. Right, I found a bit of oak. It looks like it's a limb that's fallen. I don't know when it fell, but it might have been quite a while ago, which means it might be fairly seasoned, making it even that little bit more tougher than it would be if it was fresh. It's probably got a similar diameter to the piece of ash I was sawing a minute ago, but I think we could have a good go at getting through this with the saw. Again, to make it a fair challenge, I'm not gonna saw through one of these smaller diameter limbs. I'm gonna try and saw through probably here, where again, we've got two branches that, that V, they've got the V notch, which is where it'll be tight grain, making it extra tough. Or I could go somewhere here where it's fairly, fairly thicker in diameter, but I think I'm gonna go here because I like a challenge and I think that is where the challenge will lie when it comes to sawing this giant limb. And just to prove to you that this has fallen from a giant oak, I'm gonna show you what this tree looks like right here. There's actually, there's actually a few oak trees here that, there's this giant one here, and then this oak tree right there. There's an oak tree there as well, there's an oak there, there's an oak there, there's an oak there, and just looking down, just to confirm it's oak, there we are, oak leaf, with a slug. Oak leaves all over the place. So when it comes to specs for this saw, this has got five teeth to every 30 millimeters. And as you can see, these teeth are extra large. So just from looking at the sawdust that's come off it already, I can tell this limb has been here for quite a while, maybe a couple of years, because the wood inside this seems to be very dry, which I'm very happy with because it's gonna give me a nice fair challenge. Again, like I said, a challenge. It's definitely gonna be a challenge because seasoned oak is very tough to saw through, especially with a hand saw.
So another reason why I chose this piece of wood is because it's fallen and it's lying on the ground at a very awkward angle. You can see what's going to happen now is as I saw through, it's going to then fall, it's going to pinch on the top and there's a very high chance in the blade becoming stuck. So before that's happened, what I've done is I've removed the blade, the saw blade, I'm now going to do an, a cut from underneath and that should allow the wood to then fall away and my blade to be free. The last thing I want in a scenario like this is my blade to be wedged in there and the tree to pinch down on my blade and me to then have an issue with um, trying to extract the blade. So I'm now going to use this to cut underneath. There we go, cut all the way through it. That's a bit of a challenge. And there it is, cut all the way through it. Hello, supervised by my dog. Seasoned oak lying on the forest floor a nice limb, slightly out of breath, but you can see, we just moved the dog, watch out, look what's this, what's this, get it. You can see there we've got a nice knotted bit where there's two branches and it's, and it's actually made it that little bit more tougher to cut through because it's a knot. We've got the grain that way, that way, you can see it's all dense right there. Yeah, that was a bit of a challenge. And also the way the wood was lying. So that's why I had to do those cuts underneath it. It just goes to show, never underestimate the power of a pull saw. Woo! I need a drink. So I hope that gives you a bit of a clearer understanding of which pull saw to buy if you are in the market for a pull saw. Hey, you want to go home, don't you? All right, come on then. And that brings us to the end of the video. Remember, you can use these saws to make to build anything from a small lean-to shelter to a large A-frame shelter like this you can see behind me. Just to recap again, we've got the pocket boy, then we've got the gum boy, and then we went up to the what we started with at the beginning of the video, which is the Katana Boy 500, so that's 500 millimeters long of that blade. Moving on to the Katana Boy 650, and then we finished off with this one. Yes, it's the one meter long blade, an absolute beast, you know. What is my go-to saw? A lot of people ask me what my go-to saw would be. And I would say it would be somewhere between this one, which is the big boy, 36 centimeters, 360 millimeters, or this one, which is the Katana Boy 500. With these two, you can build quite a, quite a lot of things, ranging from, again, a small shelter to a big lean-to A-framed structure. That is it, that's the end of the video. I just wanna say if you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to share it and comment below if you wanna see me build anything in particular with these. Look out for these in the next few weeks because in my videos, I'm gonna be using these to build and create some furniture for the round house. It's now time to fill it in, make a nice bed, make a table, and who knows, feel free to comment below what you wanna see me build in the round house. Thanks for watching, goodbye. Oh, and if you're still there, I'll put a link below to the Silky Saws website.